Hello everyone and welcome to our week 12 lecture. Um, you should be viewing this on Monday, April 6th. So we are now moving into our third and final unit of the semester and that's unit three. And I will also be introducing our final project, which is project four in this lecture. So I just want to give a brief overview of the week. I will have a free write for you, an introduction to unit three, and I also have um, a calendar for the rest of the semester. Um, I just basically cut and paste it directly from our syllabus. There are a couple of adjustments, um, but it should pretty much still be the same. And then of course, I will go into an overview of project four. So what I'm expecting for project four. Okay, this is what I have going on for the week. Um, you should have read this in the weekly agenda email that I sent out. Um, this is just a review again for you. So I have posted three videos and one reading for the week. So there is this video that you should be watching first. It's the week 12.1, the intro to unit three and project four. Um, and then there is a supplemental video that you should be watching before you do your free write. That is how to be an effective advocate. Um, and I messed this up, I'm sorry. This video up here, the how to be an effective advocate, it is from a nonprofit organization based out of Texas, all right? They are an anti-tobacco movement, just so you know, um, but I did like their, their video that they did on advocacy. That's what we're focusing on in unit three. And I just think it's a good, a good video. And my headphones just fell out of my ears. Sorry. Okay, and then there is one other video, resources for project four. I've put together a list of free resources that you can use when um, putting together your project for. Also for this week, oh, and then there's a reading also that I've posted to the um, class page. There is also a free write activity. There's only one this week, all right, and it's due on Sunday, April 12th. And your final draft of project three, that's your research paper, that's also due on April 12th. Um, and this shouldn't be new. Um, this is everything I stated in the email. So if you're reading those, um, you should already have all of this information. Uh, and we're doing the thing where I, I click and it doesn't go. Okay, so at this point in the video, after I'm done explaining the free write, you might want to pause and just get this out of the, the ooh, can't talk again. Um, you just might want to complete this and get it out of the way. Um, so before completing this free write, please view how to be an effective advocate. This is posted to our web campus homepage under unit three PowerPoints and lectures. Also, please read what is advocacy. It is also posted to the home page under Unit 3. So here's the directions for your free write. Advocacy refers to the public support for or recommendation of a particular cause or policy. Simply put, when you're an advocate for something, you're defending or supporting a cause. So what I want you guys to do for this assignment, so after watching the video and reading the posted article, I want you to write about what you think an effective advocacy campa campaign might look like for your chosen research topic or issue, all right? 
So we are building off of the research that you've conducted for project two and three, and now you're going to start thinking about, all right, how do you advocate for change, all right? What are other people doing to advocate for change within that field? So your, your response should be at least 250 words. So if you want to go ahead and pause this now and finish it, that is fine. Um, and once you're done, we can move on here. Oh, this drives me insane. Okay, introduction to unit three. So again, this is our final unit of the semester, yay. And we will be focusing on multimodal writing. So in other words, the different forms and genres that your writing can take outside of more traditional academic papers and essays, all right? So we'll be looking, and this includes brochures, infographics, photo essays, social media, websites, blogs, digital texts, letters, um, basically anything outside of that realm of, you know, your typical academic paper or essay. Specifically, we will be taking a look at the different ways multimodal writing can be used in order to enact change, all right? This is our advocacy unit. So I want you to be thinking about your research, all the research that you've done up to this point, and I want you to think about how you can enact some kind of positive change revolving around that researched issue. Um, okay? And I lost my train of thought, but that's what I want. All right, so how can other genres be used to enact change? including infographics, photo essays, social media, websites, all right, all of that. Okay, so here is our unit three calendar. Again, I just snipped this from our syllabus, so it really shouldn't be brand new. The only thing that's really changed is this week 15 right here. Um, I've just put drafting days. This week should be used exclusively to focus on your project in case you haven't been working on it up to that point. Um, but this is what I have planned for the rest of the semester. These are the topics that we'll be going over and their corresponding textbook pages. I will most likely be assigning only one free write per week. Um, so that will just cut down on the amount of work you have to do. And that will give you more time to focus on this final project, which will be due on May 4th by 11.59 p.m. All right. So I don't leave it until this week if you... Um, if you can help it. All right, you should be working on it throughout, but um, I have left this week free just in case, um, especially since I have gotten rid of graded peer review. All right, so that is no longer required. Um, so you guys really should have plenty of time to work on this, at least um, in regards to this class schedule. All right, I'm trying to keep things very open. Okay, so project four. Now that you have extensively researched an issue, your task is to advocate for some kind of change, all right? A change in belief, in practice, or in policy. So drawing from your project two and three, you will aim to persuade particular communities to support or enact your vision for change. Because almost no problem is solved by a single text, you will compose an advocacy campaign consisting of three documents that will target multiple audiences and include both written and non-written genres. All right, and there are four point parts. There are four parts to this assignment, and I will go into more detail 
um, in the later slides. But like I said before, guys, this should be building on all of that research you've done, all right, in projects two and three. So ultimately, you know, you have all this background information now, okay, you've done the research, and now you're going to be applying that research to your very own campaign. And here is what I'm looking for, if I can advance forward. There we go. There's a delay. I think there's just a delay. Okay, so part one, open letter or letter to an editor. So you'll choose either an open letter or a letter to the editor format, and this should be one page single spaced, and you should format this like a business letter, all right? So no double space, no size 14 font, okay? It needs to be formatted like a business letter. And you need to respond to a real and recent opposing position or a counter argument, okay? Um, and you should have already done this research for your paper. Um, so whatever counter argument you, you chose, um, find a specific person that has adapted that counter argument um, and write a letter to them, okay? You're going to be writing a letter to them. So if you're struggling to find some kind of counter argument, consider organizations or individuals who might be actively working against your cause or who might be making your proposal for change difficult to accomplish, all right? And I want you to write a letter to them and I want you to explain your point of view, okay? Explain your point of view and address their concerns, all right? Because when you're responding to a counter argument, you're supposed to be summarizing their counter argument and you're supposed to be responding to it. Like, okay, here's why I think this position is problematic. Here is the research that I have done to support my claims, that sort of thing. That's what I'm looking for in this part one. And moving on to the next slide with this crazy lag. Okay, the second part, you will be writing a letter of appeal. All right, and this is also one page, single spaced, business format, all right, regular sized font. And you will be asking an individual, a group or organization to act as an ally in advocating for change. So the recipient of your letter should be someone who A, can offer something meaningful to your efforts and B, may be inclined to help because they care about and or work on related issues. So an example of this, you can reach out to nonprofits to help you with your, your campaign, okay? Um, nonprofits are a good one. Maybe an individual has donated a significant amount of money to your campaign. Um, that's another person you can write to. And in this letter, you are asking them for their help. So I might suggest opening up with some background research before asking for their help and then maybe concluding with, um, you know, how their contribution will actually help enact change. So that's one, one way you can do that. Part three, and this is the arguably the biggest part of this project, it's a visual or non-written advocacy document. And this should be the equivalent of three written pages, double-spaced, all right? This component can be fulfilled by one larger document, such as a photo essay or video, or two smaller documents, like two flyers, a flyer and a brochure, a meme and a brochure. Um, you could even do an infographic and a brochure, something along those lines, all right? Um, you should select a genre appropriate to your situation. So who do you want to reach? What genre will allow you to reach them? What genre will allow you to make your argument most compellingly? 
Um, so the biggest example I can think of is, let's say you wanted to make flyers, right? Um, I remember on campus before we left, there were a lot of flyers in the bathrooms just telling people to wash their hands, to consistently wash their hands with soap. Um, there were hand washing directions, okay? So that is one example of a non-written advocacy document, right? Um, so if you were doing something on climate change, right, maybe you would want to do an infographic of sorts to maybe post on college campuses to educate people um, on the impacts of climate change. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of other examples off the top of my head, but there's a lot to choose from you guys. Um, and there's a lot of room for creativity here, um, which is why I'm not trying to give too many examples um, because I want, I want you guys to pick something that fits your research. All right. Um, photo essays are really good for kind of that emotional impact. Um, flyers are always popular. Infographics are popular. Um, you can even do a podcast episode or a video. Um, not many students do that, but I think it would be really cool to see that, um, if you have the technology available. Okay. So this is the big creative portion of your project. Um, and I do want you to spend a lot of time working on this. And finally, the final part of this project is the reflection letter to the instructor or, you know, your, your reflection response to me, okay? This should also be one page. It should be written to me and it should address the following. So the situation of your campaign, what are you hoping to achieve? What audience are you trying to reach? What genres did you select and why? Um, discuss your main persuasive strategies and why you chose them, what you're most proud of, and what you still wish you could improve, and anything else you'd like me to know. All right. Um, this shouldn't take up too much of your time. Again, single spaced if you can, single spaced one page. Um, and it should be fairly simple and straightforward. You're just summarizing everything that you've done and you're reflecting on it. Okay, so that um, is all I have for this particular lecture. Um, again, this is the first one of the week. So if we were spacing this out over a, a class week, um, you would be viewing this on Monday. Um, so for next class, do make sure that you are finishing up your research paper. You're turning in the final draft by Sunday. I also want you to start thinking about your advocacy campaign documents um, in Project 4. Read over those directions. Listen to this video. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, unfortunately, I don't have completed project samples for you guys, um, but I do want to go through each part and kind of give specific examples of what you could do. All right. So that will be upcoming probably in the next week or so. And also, please do keep up with your textbook readings. There's a lot of useful information in there. Um, I cannot possibly include everything from the textbook in these presentations because that would just go on for hours. So I do trust that you guys are keeping up with those and are reading your textbook. All right. That is all I have for this lecture, and I will see you in the next one.